Hey guys, t here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Royal Navy ships in World of Warships Legends. Now at the time I'm making this, there's no cruiser line in the UK tech tree, so we're not going to be covering cruiser commanders or the cruisers. If and when that comes down the pipe, which I assume it will at some point, we'll cover that in a separate video and take a more in-depth look. I do want to point out right now, though, if you do have UK cruiser commanders and you're using them on the Danae, or whatever the tier 2 is, there are HE centric perks available for these commanders. There are no HE shells in any of these ships, so it's a wasted slot. Don't put them on. I don't know if Wargaming, if it's an oversight on their part or they just don't care about having uh, commanders with bogus options, but either way, I would suggest they should fix that. Likewise, with Reginald down here, he's got an engine boost perk. There's no engine boost on UK destroyers, so that's another wasted slot. You need to be aware of what your ship's consumables are and make sure you're not wasting any slots. Again, that's something they should take a look at, in my opinion. Uh, for destroyer commanders, we have Reginald Tierwit here. He's the one I have unlocked so far. Frankly, I'm not massively impressed with him. I uh, view the UK destroyers as kind of support ships, as we'll talk about more in the gameplay section. So I have them set up in that in mind. Uh, this one I've been going back and forth with. The torpedoes are an important part of the UK destroyers, so this is definitely a viable option. I've been playing with this recently, though, and I find that to be pretty good. Subsurface Venture. Look at me now. Stand or fall. And again, this one's a waste, so don't put that on. And Smoke on the Water. So I have him set up. I think that's pretty optimal in terms of how I play the ships, at least. Uh, this Philip... Fine guy, or however you say his name, uh, his base trait's very interesting. So if you do have him, take a look at this, and that's a one you could potentially use as an inspiration on other nations' cruisers and destroyer commanders. So in my opinion, he's probably the more interesting commander, at least for that uh, trait alone. I would set him up with a kind of a long-range focus and kind of focusing on gun perks. So I would put a uh, quick fix, flank speed, glass cannon, and sidestep would be how I would set him up if I had him. Uh, for battleship commanders, currently I have Andrew Cunningham. As I'll talk about um, when the, the battleship section, I play these ships kind of as, uh, I would compare to maybe like an offensive lineman in American football, for those of you that are familiar with that sport. Just kind of plugging up a hole or holding down a position. You can make them a little bit more mobile. The ships in general are a little bit more mobile than American battleships, but I've been kind of using them to anchor a side, so I'm kind of sacrificing some mobility and turret traverse in my builds and focusing on enhancing the guns. So I have not one for the nuisance, gyrating drill bits, marksmanship, and reaching out. Charles Madden is the other battleship commander. You can set him up for close quarters combat if that's your play style. That's a viable build with him. I have him set up fairly similarly for uh, Commander Cunningham. More of a long range focus. I personally feel that the British battleships are a little bit better at medium to long range. So that's how I would suggest doing it. And I would put on um, not one for the nuisance crisscross, firefighter, and reaching out would be my build if I had him. So, like I say, you just got to be careful with these commanders, how you're setting them up. But other than that, uh, we'll just jump right into the destroyers. All right, so for these nation overview videos, I don't generally comment on the footage in the background like I would for a normal replay, but this game was a pretty good one. I do want to give a shout out to Dragos, who I believe he said he's a subscriber to my channel, so if you're watching this, this game that you're watching in the background is almost one of the most epic games I've played to this point. Unfortunately, as you'll see in the end, uh, we had a little bit of a snafu, but pretty good game overall. So just if you're keeping an eye on the footage. Uh, me and him had kind of a good symbiotic relationship, even though we weren't communicating um, beyond possibly using the command wheel. So I'm going to go over briefly what makes these destroyers unique. 
number one, they have single fire torpedo tube options. So their options are single fire and they call it quote unquote wide angle, but on the spread it is, tends to be pretty equivalent to like a narrow angle spread for the other destroyers. So generally I would recommend using the single tube uh, method of firing. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's going to give you a little bit more control. The, prob the problem you're going to have with it is when you're engaged with other destroyers close quarters. Typically, if you're playing, if you're in a fight close quarters against other destroyers, I like to use, that's the time I would use a wide angle on the other nations because uh, they're going to be turning and it's very hard to hit a fellow destroyer at close quarters assuming they're a competent player, which as time goes on more and more players are. But a trick that I'm incorporating is using the wide angle spread. So, you know, when they're turning and they're weaving around, that'll actually help you get a strike. So all you need to do is hit one torpedo. So it'll really cut down on the angles that they have to evade your strikes, especially if you get multiple salvos in the water. But that option isn't available for the UK destroyers. It can be, so I, I find the single tube firing to be harder, but I just, I try and swing it around wildly and fire the torpedoes in all different directions. And that's probably your best bet in most cases. The other thing that uh, makes these uh, destroyers unique, at least from the other lines that we have right now, is the consumables. They do not have an engine boost, and they do have what sonar. I think it used to be called Hydroacoustic in the uh, Alpha and on the PC version, but it's called Sonar in a game. Sonar is an interesting consumable for a destroyer. I actually like it quite a bit. It'll allow you to kind of hunt down other destroyers. So if they pop a smoke, you can close in the Sonar's range. Sonar will allow you to both spot the torpedoes at longer distance and the enemy ships. So if you know you got a destroyer hiding on the other side of an island or in a smoke cloud, you can deploy that puppy. They usually have very long deployment times and that'll give you the ed edge over the enemy destroyers who none of the other nations that we currently have have the sonar. I believe the German destroyers will have it once we get them in about a month's time. But currently that's their edge. So those are two things that kind of make these ships unique. Now lower tiers I played these ships primarily as like stealth uh, torpedo boat you know, type of destroyers similar to the Japanese. Again, they don't have quite the camo, and they don't have the sneakiness as the Japanese, but they do, um, they can fire torpedoes without being detected, so you can do that. As I moved up in tiers, I'm playing it as kind of a support boat. My goal is to usually try and stay within my team, and I have objectives in mind, but I don't have a set plan. I'm reacting to the situation so I'm looking out for enemy destroyers to engage these boats are pretty good at fighting other destroyers close quarters and again that sonar can give you an edge over them especially when they're popping that smoke trying to disengage from you um, look for islands to set up ambushes around okay these are pretty stealthy boats in general and you can get into positions and take out ships now that's a, that's a good tactic for any destroyer, but I, I, it's just something I'm trying to focus on with the UK destroyers in particular, as opposed to kind of sailing around in the middle of the ocean looking for targets like I would with a Japanese destroyer, using the islands for cover. And the other object, I, I don't generally find these destroyers to be extremely effective at capping you can try it if the enemy team's not aggressive at pushing you. You can get away with it, but I don't feel like these ships are very good at holding down a position like a US destroyer would be, so I'm pretty careful about doing that. And the other thing that I'm kind of keeping in my mind as an option is kind of waiting for enemy ships to engage other people on my team and then firing HE rounds at them just to either annoy them and distract them, maybe draw their attention to us while our team either gets away or continues to fight back and just kind of turn the tide that way. 
The, HG sh the AP shells on these destroyers I find to be pretty worthless. Mm. I'm almost to the point where I don't think I ever load them anymore. I experimented with them a fair amount, but the HG shells are pretty good. I think they have the highest damage or the highest chance to light fires of the destroyers we have right now. It's not a huge chance, but the rate of fire that you can pump out shells, you know, you're gonna start some fires. So that's what I'm kind of seeking to do with these destroyers. Just kind of a harassment ship. Look for opportunities and not have as much of a structured plan as I would with like a Japanese or an American destroyer. Where American destroyers, I'm gonna try and contest the cap. Or you can actually like hold down positions in those destroyers. Japanese, I'm just kind of doing solo actions, you know, trying to get off on my own ambush, you know, launch torpedoes from angles that the enemy would never expect it. But you, it's just, if you get caught out in the open with these UK destroyers, you know, sailing around in the middle of the ocean trying to sneak up on someone, if a plane or another destroyer spots you, you're probably going to get deleted, assuming the other team is... Uh, firing at destroyers, which they should be. So, like I say, I'm going to try and use the terrain, and I'm just trying to keep an open mind, and ever since I kind of adopted that mentality with these, I've been playing a lot better in them. Now, of course, if I didn't mention the smoke, that'd be pretty bizarre, since that's probably the biggest standout distinction of these destroyers. They have six charges, um, they're a minute long charges, so very short duration, but lots of them. How you want to be using these ideally is as disengagement, disengagement tools, so if you're taking some shots, harassing ships, and then they start to fire upon you, you want to pop that smoke, get out of there. I've tried, in lower tiers, I was sitting in the smoke a lot and firing at people, I, the higher up you get, that's it's extremely dangerous to play. And A, it's dangerous to sit in smoke at higher tiers anyways. But with a really short duration, you're going to find yourself in trouble a lot. Because with the smokes, if you're using it as an attack position, you have to start to exit it with about 10 seconds left, usually, to get the acceleration going. Because uh, you're usually going to be spotted immediately when you leave the smoke. So if you're using the smoke properly, how it's intended, you're going to be again, harassing ships and then using the smoke and then disengaging with it rather than using it as a tool for like an offensive uh, focus. So keep that in mind. Attention, reporting the target position. All yeah, and then taking a look at the battleships. On paper, they look like they're intended to be HE spamming pyromaniacs. I'm not here to tell you to not play that way. I think you can play that way, and you can probably have some great games doing it. I just personally think that you're giving up some potential damage. Uh, the potential damage of the AP shots is much higher than the HE shots. But the trick is, you got to figure out how to use the AP in these battleships. I'll go over that in just a sec, but in my view, the HE... Uh, potential damage for these ships you're gonna you're gonna get a good amount over the course of the game so if you can stay alive a long time in these battleships which they are designed to do they have very good frontal armor armor overall is pretty good they're pretty durable ships but you're gonna kind of gradually get I don't want to say minimum damage but you're gonna get like a low damage that builds over the course of a game so if that works for you, that's fine. I'm not telling you to not play that way. I'm just saying, in my view, after experimenting with the ships, I rarely, if ever, use HE shots anymore. Uh, potential time I would be doing it would be against a well-angled battleship, but even with these, even against those targets, usually I can find a way to sneak the AP shots in through the deck, the top of the ship. So. Briefly, I covered this brief or a little bit of my Iron Duke video, but I know a lot of you haven't seen that, so I'll go over it again. That British AP shells have a shorter fuse on them. So how AP shells work is when they hit the ship, a fuse is 
uh, set off, okay? And then they're designed to enter the ship and then explode internally to cause the maximum amount of damage. That's how AP shells work. That's how. That's why when you shoot through a thinly armored destroyer, the fuse will set and the shell will travel all the way through the other side of the ship before it explodes. That's why you're getting over penetrations. They're called minimum. They're like a thousand damage per hit, basically, as opposed to a high damage shot, which you hope to be getting with an AP shell. So with these shells, you got the uh, the short fuse. So if you're trying to penetrate the really thick citadel armor, like waterline armor, they're going to hit that, and by the before they penetrate all the layers of the armor, they're actually going to explode. So you're not going to get citadel shots typically by shooting waterline shots in these battleships. How you can do it is at long range, if you're aiming at the top of the ship, so if you line up the horizontal aim indicator, basically so it's running parallel with the top of the ship and typically at about 12 plus kilometers I find when the shells are raining down vertically they'll penetrate the deck of the ship which is thinly armored relatively speaking drop through and potentially hit a citadel that way so you can do a lot of damage that way the ships are in general armored more heavily towards the waterline than they are towards the top of the hull on the side so shooting these shots either if you're closer range again you know within 12 kilometers give or take um, trying to hit the side of the ship towards the top of the side you can still get very good damage shots I don't know if I have any specific examples in this background footage here but there's a lot of times where I'll throw down a salvo it'll hit the top of the side and you'll see like a 10,000 with a couple two or three thousand scattered around it which is uh, the equivalent of a citadel shot now it's not registering as a citadel shot but that's still a very high damage shot so that's how I'm shooting these shots I'm having a lot of success doing that that's how I'd recommend for you at least try it extensively you know four or five six games try and get a feel for that and see if it works for you now if you find that the HE spam works better for you I I'm not telling you to not do it. Uh, going against players that are playing these battleships using only HE shots, it's very annoying to play against them. And in the right circumstances, it's very deadly to play against them. So I'm, I'm trying to reiterate the point over and over again. I'm not telling you to not use the HE, which is, it seems like that's how these ships were designed to be played. I've just, in my own experience and with some uh, more experienced players uh, that are veterans of the PC version that I've spoken to, they are kind of reiterating my thinking where they're generally saying if you figure out how to use the AP in general you're going to have more success with that. So that's a little bit of a background on Kind of the hang-up that a lot of people have playing these ships. The entire British line in my mind is not particularly user-friendly. I'd say out of three nations, they're all harder to play. That doesn't mean they're not good ships, but it takes a little bit of digging into the mechanics of the game to figure out how to use them at maximum effectiveness, in my opinion. Maybe you're finding something differently in your own experience. But... So my strategy for these, and I alluded to it briefly when I was talking about Cunningham earlier, is due to the fact that some of the perks I've used have even slowed the turret first down a little bit more. The turret traverse in these ships is very slow, so in my opinion, you need to position your ship so that you're going to be able to keep the, sh the guns pointed on the same side of the ship for the majority of the game, if not all of the game, and your goal in my mind your goal it doesn't it doesn't it's not the end-all be-all goal but your goal should be to keep the guns pointed at the same side of the ship the entire game so you're gonna need to think about your positioning a lot in these ships at least the way I play them they are they're a bit more mobile than the American battleships at least without tinkering with the commander skills and mods and stuff like that but I'm I'm picking a position that I want to hold down. So I'm supporting destroyers trying to capture positions. Or if it's a standard game, I'm just p 
picking a spot where I'm assuming there's going to be some action, angling, getting into a position where my ship's nice and angled, usually stopping and then just gradually moving back and forth to try and either open up shots or make it a little bit harder for the enemy to hit me on a consistent basis. They're just going to have to keep adjusting their shots. But I'm not playing these ships very... Uh, I'm not moving around the map a lot, at least in the opening play. Once you hopefully win your side, then you obviously need to look to continue to affect the game by moving around and supporting the rest of your team. But that that's my thoughts on it. I, I like to hold down positions on these. Typically, these ships have... They allow you to have very steep angles, like just taking a look at the thing on the bottom right now. Uh, you can have very steep angles and have all guns firing in general. Now, I haven't played all the ships in the line yet, but that's what I'm finding as I'm going through it. So, very open decks that allow you to have good angled armor. But that, that's how I'm playing these ships. I'm finding the more experience I'm getting with them. I'm actually having quite a bit of success playing with these ships. So At first, I was not a huge fan of the British battleships, but as I'm playing with them more, I'm uh, actually starting to like them quite a bit. So Let me know in the comments if you have alternative uh, theories on how to play either the British battleships or any British, or I'm sorry, UK ships in general. And I do need to cycle back so a point I was making earlier when I'm talking about aiming up on the ship. That's against battleships specifically. When you're shooting against cruisers, you still want to shoot uh, for your traditional waterline shots. And now that I look at this game a little more closely, this was a game I played with another viewer on my channel, Jay the Cat. I was actually planning on using a different game for the background footage of this, but wound up with this one instead, so shout out to you. And just as an aside, guys, I get a lot of requests to play with you guys. I got I don't have a whole lot of time to do it, but if you're looking for people to play, um, I got a link to my Discord in the description below, and I'm hoping that as that grows, you guys can kind of meet up with each other and find people to play with that way, and then hopefully they'll put in, like, clans at some point. We can get, like, a channel related clan going that I could set up for you guys so um, and if I do get a chance to play with you guys I'll post a message in the discord and let you guys know and we can set up a game that way but again if that'd be the best way I think there's a lot of cool people that follow the channel a lot and some really good players and some new newer players too that could definitely use some some uh, people to play with so if you're looking for people to play check that out sign up and Hopefully we can get that up and running. Good spot for you guys. So that's it for this one. If you did like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. There's plenty more World of Warships coming all the time. Uh, comments about the British, the UK line. Uh, leave them below. I'd love to hear from you guys how you're playing them. And we'll see you guys all later. Alright, peace.